together. Be looking this way. Take yourselves in there, guys. Then you're all the best of friends. Okay, looking this way. That's great, guys. Over there, smiling. Let me look at this way in the background. what happened and for actually quite laudable reasons from the end of the first world war for 19 years there was a period of decline and reduction in naval aviation but then because of the Admiralty's efforts in 1937 with the war coming the Admiralty regained control of the fleet air arm and that saw a big expansion and two relevant things started to happen firstly the British government ordered some brand new big aircraft carriers. That's interesting because that's just happened, hasn't it? And secondly, ordered a whole load of new aircraft, mostly American. That's interesting. That's just happened as well. So um, the second theme really starts to concentrate on Bursco, Bursco's history. Because of many, many of you will know, this place was chosen because of the Battle, the Battle of the Atlantic that was going on at the time. The work started in 1942, and the, this naval air station was operational by September 1943. Now, the Battle of the Atlantic, the bitter Battle of the Atlantic, went on right to the very last days of the Second World War. But I think it's fair to say that by the time this air station had opened, actually the balance of, uh, uh, of success was moving in the Allies' direction. Uh, and that was by no small means due to the efforts of the fleet air arm operating from the merchant aircraft carriers, the MAC ships and the escort carriers that you might have heard of, predominantly the legendary swordfish that you may have seen overflying this place, and also um, martlet fighters. But the history that um, is particularly relevant was in the other side, because round right about 1943, when this place opened, the big new armoured strike carriers were starting to be delivered 
Well, that's interesting because we've just had one delivered. Um, and the appearance of big new um, strike air groups with a mixture of predominantly US aircraft, but there was one British aircraft that was part of that, an aircraft car called the Ferry Firefly, an aircraft that you've probably heard of. And I mention that in particular, that story, because Bursco became the main operating base of the Navy Fireflies. They came here to form the squadrons, to work up, to train, before they embarked predominantly for service in the British Pacific Fleet against Japan. So, um, by that time, the Royal Navy was really learning lessons from the US Navy and the US Marine Corps in terms of multi-carrier task groups, uh, multi-aircraft carriers operating in a single task group. And so why were the Fireflies different? Well, the Fireflies were an unusual aircraft. They were two-seat aircraft with a pilot and an observer, both officers. Um, they were fast, fighter-like aircraft but with a very heavy armament. And so the way they operated was that they launched first from the carriers, formed up into a squadron, they'd effectively be pathfinders for the main strike groups, and they'd really pioneered the role of what we now call SEER, Suppression of Enemy Air Defense. The idea was that they went in the fireflies, trained here, went into the target area to suppress the enemy anti-aircraft fire for the main strike going in behind them. That was their role. So, uh, just moving to the um, third theme, really, and that is that, turning to today, and that is that I think many of us who serve in the armed forces realize that it's kind of an inherent feature of modern successful democracies that society doesn't value the military. If it's enjoyed peace, it forgets what the military is all about, and in fact, uh, even this evening, as I wandered around the car park, um, waiting for Lord, he was actually ten minutes early, for me being even earlier, um, uh, a lady came up to me and said, so, you know, are you in the military? You know, which force are you in? And I kind of thought, well, do I look like I'm in the army? You know, but that, that, that kind of signifies. So, naturally, I think you're kind of getting the reason for my sincerity in uh, me saying that I think all of us in the service and, and Navy Wings really appreciate what's being done to preserve this site, this place, where um, uh, I know that many former naval air crew came here and I know, um, having interviewed some of the survivors, that some of them launched from here, we say launch in the Navy, not take off, launched from here to go to their aircraft carrier and never saw British fields again. And I'm sure that some of those were hammered in by just such aircraft. So it's really in that context that on a personal basis and um, on behalf of the Royal Navy and the Navy Wings Charity, I really thank all of you who are involved in um, preserving naval heritage here. Uh, and, and in particular the company for a very um, uh, considerate and tasteful restoration of this park. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the offer. I might regret that, but I'm going to break the heel of it. <laughs> Oh, oh, loose, sir. Oh, 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 sorry. Yeah, yeah don't. Sorry about that. Sorry about that. Oh, we've got it. You can see it. Atmospheric, that's it all there, Miss Alder. Right, now you go about your business, sir. That's loose. Coming in. I think 
Thanks, guys. Thanks, Dom.